Welcome back to TYT Sports. Yesterday, Thursday, the all NBA first, second, and third team were announced. And I needed to, in a panic, I was like, Andre, you need to be free. You need to be free. I need to discuss this with you. I don't care what you're doing. I, and, and to be honest, the email wasn't that far off. It was like, I know you have <laughs> other obligations. However, I need you. And Andre was kind enough to join me uh, for this clip and one more after this. Uh, Andre, we're gonna go through the first, uh, the, the first, second, and third team, and then there's, is there an all NBA snub team? Should the media have votes if it affects contracts? Some other fun stuff to get into with all this stuff. So the first team was the four MVP candidates that have been discussed uh, all through the year and Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis or Rudy Gobert seems to be the debate and I think we agree on which one. And then the second team, if we just skip to element number two, Giannis, Kevin Durant, Rudy Gobert, Stephen Curry and Isaiah Thomas. And then lastly on the third team, which I think is the hardest team to put together. Draymond Green, Jimmy Butler, DeAndre Jordan, John Wall, and DeMar DeRozan. I'm sure you had many of uh, initial thoughts and reactions. When you saw the first team, did you think they got it right? Or should it have been Gobert over Anthony Davis? You know, it's <laughs> it's funny because um, I've, I've caught this criticism before uh, among the comments on TYT Sports, and I'm about to catch it again now. Uh -oh. Honestly, Draymond Green should have been on the first team, like over, you know, over, who? over both of them, over Rudy Gay oh, or Orient. As a okay, as a center, okay. They're gonna say like over LeBron James. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, maybe there was a thing on okay, what are we listing them as? Are we listing them as centers or power forwards? Um, and and if that's the case, if I have to pick one or the other, I probably would lean towards Gobert because I think he had more impact on the game. He is a, a better defender. Anthony Davis obviously had better points. I write about fantasy sports and, and DFS, and I would take Anthony Davis on my DFS team uh, outside of the games where he gets hurt and <laughs> leaves in the middle and drives me crazy. But I mean, you know, obviously I take him on my fantasy team, but I think um, what Gobert does has a bigger impact on the court than what Davis does, and what, you know, uh, Draymond Green does has a bigger impact than both of them. What I was so confused about with some of the voting, for one, I don't know who you are, we will find you putting Kawhi Leonard on the third team, putting <laughs> LeBron James on the second team. It's like, to me, that just reminds me of like the Baseball Hall of Fame voting. Like, who are the three of you who didn't vote for Ken Griffey Jr.? Like, what, right. why, why would you do that? Um, right. But in the case of basketball, first of all, I thought, I thought if it was gonna come down to, and this is like the number one argument, is team success when it comes to, or that's the criticism you see all the time for why can't Russell Westbrook be MVP? Team success, why? Top three seeds, all NBA first teams and second teams. The Jazz were infinitely more successful than the, the Pelicans were. And a lot of that I thought belonged in, in part to Rudy Gobert. And it's a team sport, we get that. But that's why I kind of thought it should have been Gobert over Anthony Davis. And no disrespect, the second team isn't a bad place to finish. On the Draymond Green note, I will direct the, the audience towards is there two articles? There's a, I mean, there was one before the Warriors even won 73 games in a season about how impactful Draymond Green has been. And it, the more data we get, the more it proves that point, no? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, what you were kind of referring to on, on my blog on the Hoops Lab, uh, hoopslab.rotowire.com, um, now it's actually a kind of a handful of Draymond articles from the last couple <laughs> years. Um, as you said, initially, it was kind of a hot take. You know, it was last year, maybe early mid season, um, when everybody was kind of like, oh my God, Steph, Steph Curry's not human, you know? Um, and I wasn't realizing that. I mean, his shooting and everything was crazy, but as you said, just all of the data was saying, hey, you know, this Draymond Green might be just as important to the team's successes as Steph Curry. So my first article was along the lines of, oh, wow, um, you know, I know this sounds crazy, y'all, but. <laughs> This Draymond guy is really, really good. And then by the second article, it was like, yeah, no, he really is that good. And by the article I put out a week or two ago, I'm I'm not even apologetic anymore. It's like, dude, the <laughs> superstar. Right like, uh, how, dare you, <laughs> how dare you use numbers to, to back up your <laughs> argument about Draymond Green? I've always liked Draymond Green, the, the, the team player. Uh, over mm -hmm. time, the Draymond Green kicking some people in the nuts definitely gets <laughs> under your skin and Draymond Green, Draymond Green, the instigator and all these things. I think he actually plays a really important role in the whole context of the NBA landscape. Like he is the number one villain 
Maybe mm -hmm. Zaza Pachulia has taken over that. <laughs> but in general, Draymond is kind of like the number one villain in the NBA. Therefore, he plays a very, and James Harden used to be that guy, or at least the James Harden, Dwight Howard Rockets used to be. And then it got too friendly. So Draymond kicks people in the nuts and all of a sudden, He's gonna <laughs> star as the Joker of the new Batman movie. Uh, let's go to the third team, because this is the I think this is the toughest one to put together most of the time. So Draymond Green, according to you, obviously snubbed in your opinion, based off the numbers, the data, that second team should have been a lock and arguably first team. Now, so I originally had DeMar DeRozan pretty high up on my second team, but the more but that was about 60 games into the NBA season, the last 22 actually did have a profound impact, in my opinion, on that. And the more you look at it, I don't mean this to, to snub uh, Raptors fans, but I just find it hard to not have Chris Paul there. Because the numbers for Chris Paul show tremendous impact. And we know that the Clippers, unfortunately, choke away their game, their first round series, and who knows what the future of Chris Paul holds. But I think Chris Paul just, off the top of my head, it's tough to convince me that DeMar DeRozan still had a better year than Paul. Yeah, so it's interesting because, you know, at the, the midway point of the year, I remember I wrote an article about how Chris Paul was the biggest snub on the All-Star team. Right. That, um, you know, even though he had gotten hurt, maybe a week before the All-Star game was announced, that over the, the full body of the first half of the season, he was clearly one of the top 24 players in the league, top 12 players yeah. in the yes. West. Yes. According to the, the impact stats, he was the best player, or at least according to uh, ESPN's real plus minus. You know, right. you can get into how that's calculated, but he, he was barely, very clearly measured out as one of the best players in the league. Um, the only argument you might make for somebody like DeMar DeRozan is that he didn't have those injury concerns. It's true. But I mean, if not for the injury, DeMar DeRozan wasn't the best player on his team. I mean, Cal Lowry, at, at that same time I was making the argument for Paul, I made a similar article for Cal Lowry and how he was really the monster of his team um, and, and not DeMar DeRozan. The, the DeRozan's impact is actually surprisingly small for a player that scores as much as, as he does. Um, which may or may not say something about how how valuable volume scoring by itself is, but um, but no. So I agree with you that I don't know that I would have had DeRozan on the team even with their injuries. Um, you know, I, I would have considered Lowry over him, and I definitely would have had Chris Paul over him. Right. Um, and and you know the the, the others on the second or third team. Um, you know, there there's some interesting choices, but I think DeRozan is probably the one that I can justify the least of, of the All NBA of teams. Of the All NBA teams. What about Carl Anthony Towns? Because he wasn't igniting the first 41 games of the season, but then he went on to put up record breaking numbers for his age and really just for, it's like Shaq pace in terms mm -hmm. of just the very simple points and rebounds. And if you watch Carl Anthony Towns play the game of basketball, it's a thing of beauty at times because. He does so many little things right, and that doesn't necessarily fill up. I mean, he does fill up the box score, or fill it up as much as you'd expect. Um, so I thought that DeAndre Jordan was like the Clipper on the team that uh, on the on one of the All NBA teams. And I, I, when you look at the the last chart, the other votes, which I always find very interesting, some because I think that some guys are just very high when they're making their votes, and other times I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So we actually go to that fourth element because. Towns and DeAndre Jordan were very close in terms of, I think, total votes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so you know I'm a big Towns fan. Of course, I mean, just of off, off rip, you know, I'm a big Towns Are fan. Are you though? Are you? I, I, I actually am, you know. <laughs> um, I think, uh, obviously, you know, um, Kevin Garnett, who's retired now, was my favorite player at the time. So I was paying attention to Minnesota as Towns came into to the league, um, saw him in Vegas. Um, Saw him play in Vegas as a rookie. Mm -hmm. As a sophomore, he was staying at the same hotel that right. we were. Right. And uh, so got to see him in the hallway and around the pool and stuff. And he just seems like a good guy in addition to being great at basketball. He so, is. you know, I mean, I, I'm, I would be all for any props that he gets. With that said, he's one kind of like Anthony Davis, whose box score production, because he's so good on offense, his box score production looks a bit better than his actual measured impact comes out to be. 
Um, in in Towns' case, the problem is all on defense. Right. Like he's a ridiculous offensive talent, but he's a center. You know, he's a big man. He he really his biggest job is to be a strong defender. And he hasn't mastered that yet. You know, I'm, I, I have every confidence that he will. You know, he seems to work hard. He's got Tom Thibodeau as a right. coach. I think, honestly, this is where the Timberwolves messed up by not keeping Garnett around this year. You know, maybe even next year, because I think he could have got him there sooner. Even just as a but, coach, yeah. Yeah, it's like, I, mean, I, I don't I don't have a problem with him not making the team yet, because that defense is important enough that, that I feel like he should have made it. Honestly, of his class, the more interesting question to me would be for Nikola Jokic because oh, God, Jokic also wasn't, you know, a dominant defender, but his offense is so high impact. I mean, in addition to all the scoring and stuff he does, being able to run your offense through a big man, that's part of the reason I'm always talking about Draymond. You know, with Jokic being able to, like, he could, he's essentially a, a point center. And, and so he measures out his way the most impactful player from from his class you know even over town so you know the, the question of snub would have actually maybe fit him a little more even though he didn't become a starter till halfway through the year defensively is something that we both talk about all the time actually another person i have on regularly jr jackson like we're a big fan of like the big defensive plays so uh, i thought not, in terms of like an all snub team sure you can put him on that list but don't get me wrong deandre jordan was a lot of the reason the Clippers could stay in games going against some extremely talented resurgence of new big men. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. We're not dealing with Shaq. We're not dealing with Tim Duncan anymore. We're dealing with this new 17 tool. I'm going to shoot where <laughs> I want. I'm going to dunk on you. I'm going to Euro step around you. We just didn't know that these things could be uh, done before. So it's, I would think, more difficult to defend the big man nowadays. Marcus Gasol is another person that got votes who could have easily been uh, somewhere on that third team, I would agree, too. Um, um, yeah, and if you're going to mention Gasol, I mean, Mike Conley could have easily made that team over DeMar DeRozan. I like Mike. I've always been on team Mike Conley three, four years ago. I was on team Mike Conley. I love Mike Conley. I want a Mike Conley jersey, truthfully. Um, interestingly, 10 years ago, how much the NBA has changed. We're doing a, a 2K17 challenge later on. Uh, the MB, all NBA first team 10 years ago, Kobe, Tim Duncan, Dirk Nowitzki, Steve Nash, and Amari Stoudemire. So mm -hmm. just a wild changeover of generation. And then, of course, the debate that was on some of Reddit was who would win? I, uh, that's tough. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, that's not yeah. an easy. It's not an easy head to head for them. Um, but you know, I miss Tim Duncan. It was just like I saw. Is like I miss saw. I, I miss Tim Duncan before we go for the reason that like I'm watching Spurs basketball now, and just there was something great about Tim Duncan bank shots. Like he was allowed to do it. He didn't ever have to call bank because the bank was open for Tim Duncan always. I miss it. I actually miss it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If, if he missed shot and it banked in, nobody would be like, oh, he didn't mean to make that. They'd be like, oh, that's Duncan banking the ball. <laughs> that's Duncan. He's so <laughs> smart. He's always doing it right. Uh, and lastly, Carl Anthony Towns, like many great, great things in this world from uh, from New Jersey, just like J.R. Smith, the Lords of the Underground. And, New Jeruse. Uh, and, Did you uh, say Lords of the Underground? Yeah, they're from, I mean, they're, well, one of them is from Newark, because I always say in, in the beginning of a lot of the songs, Lords of the Underground from Newark, New Jersey, but not both, two of them I think are from Brooklyn, but one of them is from. Uh, Just the fact that you mentioned Lords of the Underground, like you know, oh, I love. We, we, we should have Chief Rocka in the background when huge, you say that. I'm a huge. I mean, first this is a, this is a group that was sampling parts of James Brown beats. Uh, Funky Child is part of James Brown's. Uh, not I got you, but it's a. Oh, I was just looking it up recently. It's great. I love the Lords of the Underground. I also love NBA Street Volume Two, which is a, a video game which introduced me to the Lords of the Underground because of ah. Chief Rocka. It was one of the intro theme songs. That and Pete mm -hmm. Rock and. Great soundtrack, really great soundtrack. Oh yeah. soundtrack so like I said, use. you know, Towns, Springsteen, J.R. Smith, Lords of the Underground. We got some good things. Myself, <laughs> <laughs> New Jerusalem. I had a roommate from there. So uh, yeah, shout out to Jersey. It's a smelly place, that's for sure. Though. All right, comment below, like, favorite, subscribe. Make sure to go to uh, the Hoops Lab. Uh, Andre's Hoops Lab now is like you know, it's got like a lot of you can read for days. So start reading for days. It's got some good basketball content on there. And uh, Andre's going to be back on for one more clip in regards to, believe it or not, Kurt Schilling. We'll be back with that tomorrow.